All right, we have one of the big winners from Saturday night's UFC Vegas 8 event on the show right now. She kicked off the card in just a crazy way, picked up her first UFC win, first UFC finish, and her first UFC bonus with a second-round submission win over Hannah Cyphers. Mallory Martin joins us right now. Mallory, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing great. Jeez Louise, that was uh, that was some fight. I mean, you overcame a ton of adversity in that first round. Hannah dropped you and had you in some big trouble, but you were able to weather that storm. I know it's hard to put these things in perspective when you're actually like in the moment, but if yeah. we could put ourselves in your place for a moment, what was going through your mind as she was trying to, to take you out of there? Uh, I was just basically like, man, this ain't happening to me. You know, like not my second fight in the UFC. Like I'm not going down like this. This is not how my story ends, you know? Like that's all I could keep thinking about. Like her hitting me, I was like, this is not how I'm going down, you know? Like I'm about to turn it around. Like swear I'm about to turn it around. <laughs> Chris Tyone, the referee, that guy's had a very interesting run over the last couple of weeks because we've seen him. I, yeah, I didn't know that was that ref. <laughs> Those last two fights last weekend, I think, were he ref like one getting like knocked down and then coming back and knocking out his opponent or and then another one was like the same thing. Uh, I don't know. Uh, like. I'm thankful for him that he was my ref because he didn't stop it. He knew I was like still fighting back. So that's cool. You know, uh, I respect him for that, but yeah, what a beast. I know because I mean, he got a lot of criticism for both of those too. Well, that until like 10 minutes ago, I was like, someone told me that he was getting criticized for it, which it sucks, but he's a ref. He knows he, he, he knows like he's in there seeing there and he he'll know if, if the fighter is actually out or ne it needs to be stopped, you know? So it's like, you can't really hate on him. He's doing his job. Yeah. I think it was the, f like the second fight that we were talking about was that crazy war between Dwight Grant and Daniel Rodriguez and D Dwight had Daniel really hurt. Daniel survived and knocked him out later in the round, but yeah. it was the first fight in particular that got a lot of criticism because yours was actually a perfect stoppage overall because she let you go. You were still like shooting for takedowns. You were shooting and, and, and yeah. you were defending so yourself. Defend myself and fight to the best of my abilities, you know, with someone attacking me. Uh, yeah. So I don't like, I don't feel like people should look at him or like hate on him for that because I, I was doing just enough for it to not get stopped. You know, if I went limp and covered up and uh, wasn't moving or responding, then of, of course, you know, stop the fight. But I was still fighting back to the best of my abilities, you know. I was watching the fight on the ESPN plus stream. So it went to commercial in between the first and second round. So I wasn't able to hear the advice of your coaches and your corners. What was said to you in that moment? Because things obviously changed very quickly for you. Yeah, I, I haven't heard what, I can't remember what they said, but well, I think I, I can't remember what I said. I remember I sat down and was like, Oh man, did I get dropped? I was like, did it look bad? You know? And they're like, all right, this is a second round. You got to go in there. Uh, he was basically like, get her ass against the cage, take her down and like finish her, like stop messing around. And so I was like, okay. Uh, and I'm really good at just leaving stuff behind in the, in the past, you know, like for fighting wise, like rounds or sparring rounds or whatever. So fresh start, you know, I was there, I was ready, you know, fresh start, second round. I was, I was going to go get the job done, you know? You did exactly what your team told you to do. You took her down, you beat her up, and she gave you your back, and you finished, you finished the fight, and you locked in that choke. And after she tapped, I mean, you let out these, like, primal screams. You could, like, if you closed your eyes and just, like, pictured you in that moment, you could envision all of this weight just flying off of your shoulders. That was the loudest sigh of relief I have ever heard in my entire life, Mallory. What was going through your mind during that moment? Oh, just, like, it, I don't know, I... I feel like people are hating on me for screaming, which, uh, like, I honestly don't care because I've been through so much this year and for me to come out on the other side of it and get the win and get the win, how the fight went, um, 
like I was going to let out my emotion no matter what, you know, and if that meant me screaming or crying, whatever, uh, I was going to do it because I was in there and I fought and I came out the other side through adversity and it just meant a lot to me. You were also very grateful for Hannah because she took that fight. And, you know, this year has been tough on a lot of us, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, global pandemic, I mean, no one saw this coming, but, you know, you you talked about in the post-fight scrum, you got a little bit emotional. You were able to talk about some of the things you were dealing with heading into that fight, because, I mean, you seemed like you were in a pretty dark spot heading in based on what you were saying. Are you able to talk about what happened? Um, I don't really want to talk about what happened uh, just because it's, it's nothing to do with like fighting. It's just something that happened in my personal life that, and it was even before camp, you know, it was in the beginning of the year that I went through, went through something and it basically completely changed me as a person. And, uh, I just had to, like, I went through this camp, you know, um, needing something to help me, you know, and, uh, fighting has always been like my passion and my outlet. So it was good for me to get a fight and start a camp. And halfway through camp, I was just like, I, I need to get help. You know, I can't keep living like this. And, uh, I was just struggling with anxiety and all that. And I decided to like get help from like a therapist and, you know, talk to my coaches and whatnot. And I, uh, completely, not completely, but I turned around my, like, just, the way I was going down, you know? Um, so by the time I got to the fight, you know, I was, my, my mental was there. I was ready. I was back to myself, you know, but the beginning of the camp was a struggle. Is this something you've dealt with in the past with the anxiety and things like that? Or is this something that you've had to deal with for the first time? Um, well, when I, my dad passed away when I was 17, he was my only parent. And, uh, I dealt with like depression back then, but I never really dealt with like this type of anxiety where like I couldn't eat this camp. Um, I was, I didn't have to lose any weight because, uh, my weight was so low already starting the camp that I, it was basically about keeping the weight on and being big enough, uh, and strong enough to be able to fight, you know? So it was a different type of camp instead of like having a cut weight or lose weight, uh, that I would typically have to do. Um, so I was just struggling with that and I've never really had to deal with that kind of that like type of anxiety before. Um, so yeah, it was, it was new to me and I I seeked out help and started to do things that would help with anxiety and, uh, it slowly started to dwindle down. (laughs) Yeah, because it's hard. I, it's probably the, the more the harder part of the whole thing is just admitting that you need to to get that help. And yeah, I had like a little heart to heart with myself, and I was like, you know, I was in a spot where I was like, man, I just need to talk to my dad. You know, like my dad's gonna tell me what I'm gonna do. You know, but my dad's gone. You know, so I was just like very lost and didn't know what to do or didn't know how to help myself. And I basically was like, you know, nobody's coming to save you, Mallory. Like if you want to live a different life or if you want to get better and you don't want to live like this or have this kind of pain and anxiety, you're going to have to get help. And, you know, I talked to like my coaches and they helped me and I started seeing a therapist and it helped me with tons, you know. Because you, you said in the post-fight press conference when you were speaking with the media that your coaches may not even have known like how bad it actually was for you. Like how bad did it actually get? I don't think they knew that it was this bad or I don't even think that they knew it was that I was struggling like that this much outside of my, in my personal life. It was just to a point where I just couldn't, like I did not saying that I didn't want to live. Like I would never take that. I would never do that. But I was just at a point where I was like, I can't keep living with this pain that I have. You know, and I, it it was just, every day was a struggle. Um, And I just, like I said, I had like a heart to heart with myself and was like, nobody's going to save you. And if you want to get better, you have to seek help and um, ask for help, you know? Getting a win like that, the finish, the bonus, that had to have helped quite a bit, right? I mean, like, what did that mean to you to 
to get that bonus on top of everything because, you know, there are other finishes on the card right after yours. And I thought personally it would have been a giant injustice if you I didn't know. get a bonus. But, you know, getting word that you got the bonus after everything you've been through, that had to have meant the world to you, did it not? Yeah, I mean, getting the bonus, that's life changing. Like that, this is going to change my life. Um, and I i knew, like I had this feeling um, before I thought that something was going to happen, like something big was going to happen and it was just going to change my life, you know, and I expected, not expected, but I was open for whatever the universe was going to give me. I was open to it, you know? So, um, I think it's really cool and I'm very happy about it. And, uh, yeah, it's definitely life changing. (laughs) It's interesting because there were like two different tales coming out of that fight. There's your side where it's like, holy crap, what a comeback. Good for Mallory. On the other side, there's Hannah, who's now 0-4 in 2020. She missed weight for the fight. And clearly, you know, there's something there with her, but you can't help but feel bad for her because she was so close to snapping that skid and you were able to weather that storm and battle through it. It was just the wrong time for her to fight you in in such a weird universal way. Of course, you're happy to get back on track and overcome what you did and have the success that you had, but you can't help but kind of feel for Hannah here as well, right? No. Yeah. 100%. I think she's a good person and she's tough, you know, and it, she showed it. Um, but I knew, I knew in my heart that I wasn't going to leave that cage without my hand being raised, you know, no matter who I stood across, you know, I had a few other opponents, uh, before Hannah. Uh, so I knew that no matter what I was going in there and I wasn't going to leave until my hand got raised, no matter what, you know, so that's the mentality that I had going into the fight. So, And it didn't matter who I stood across. Um, But yeah, I feel bad for her. Um, I think, I think it sucks because she's fought very tough girls. You know, she's fought Angela Hill. She fought Mackenzie Dern. She fought a weight class up, you know, and maybe that those are um, fights maybe that she shouldn't have took, you know, Um, you have to be smart, especially at this, uh, this level, you know, if you're not ready, you shouldn't just take a dive or you shouldn't accept these fights that like a fight at 125 when you're pretty, you're not that big of a straw weight. That's a fight you probably shouldn't take, you know, you have to be smart with your career. And, uh, if it's about the money, then okay, take the fight, but you have to think about your career and your longevity in the sport. And, uh, I don't, yeah, I don't think, taking a fight at 125 was, uh, that smart for her. Um, but she's, yeah, she's fought tough, tough girl. So you can't take that away from her either. Sure. Uh, you're at elevation fight team now. And we saw Mm -hmm. what that move has done for, you know, obviously you and Shauna Dobson because she had that huge win the week before. And I get it. It's, It's weird from, from like my perspective, because, you know, I'm not a fighter. And the narrative surrounding her is that, you know, maybe a change of scenery would would do her well. But it just seems like it would do wonders for her. She could polish up some of the things that she needs to work on. Plus, you know, there's a lot to be said to just getting out of your comfort zone and getting a fresh perspective on the sport. You'd think that if Hannah decided, like if Hannah reached out to you and said, hey, what do you think about me joining the team over there? Do you think that'd be a good fit for her? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Um. I think it's really cool. Like this whole camp, it was me, Shauna and Montana in Montana De La Rose in camp. Montana fights on Saturday. So, you know, we've all us three were in camp together and we are pushing each other every single day. You know, Shauna helps me and Montana with her stand up, like our stand up. Montana is a sick wrestler. So she helps me and Shauna with her wrestling and I'm more grappling based. uh, So I help both of them with the grappling aspect of it. So it was really cool, just a really cool dynamic to have us three going through camp together and uh, just growing and getting better. And we at Elevation, we have so many really great coaches and uh, the female team is it's stacked. You know, we have a ton of really good girls out there. And at, at least at every single training, there's at least 10 to 11 girls, you know, so we have a ton of a ton of talent and a ton of bodies, you know, so I think if she decided to make a move, uh, I think it would be a smart decision for her career. Sean Madden might be one of the best 
follows on social media because if you need like a little bit of a shot of the arm, a little bit of positivity, you just go and check out his Twitter and he provides that for you. How pivotal has it been for Sean and just having those other coaches have your back and, and give you a boost when it's needed? Oh, it's been amazing. Like Sean, he, uh, showed me this book to read. It's called chop, uh, chop wood, carry water. And just, I read the book in like, I don't know, like four days and everything in the book, like I've experienced and it just opened my eyes a little bit, how to like overcome things or deal with these challenges and, and stuff like that. Um, and he's very good with the the mental side of the, the fight game. You know, he had us like visualizing after training sessions, like he would talk, like we would lay down, close our eyes. And he would literally talk us through from going to weigh-ins, stepping on the scale, facing our opponent. Uh, then now, now we're walking into the arena, we're checking in, we're getting our hands wrapped, we're warming up. You know, he would take us through all this stuff and then he would take us through the fight, you know? Like, oh, you're sitting down now, we're giving you advice. You're coming back the second round, you're, you're doing everything we've told you, you know? Like, he uh, uses the visualization really good, you know, and that's a huge part of my game. And I think that having that aspect helped me a lot. Have you always been sort of a visual fighter or is that something that you picked up along the way? No, I've literally always been, I read a lot of books and one book that, um, I like a lot, it's called mind gym. Um, but it just talks about like having your own, like, uh, mental high- highlight reel. And, uh, I don't know if you've watched any of my fights. Like I scream at, sometimes I scream at my opponents, like tell them like no one can save you or, uh, (laughs) happy Halloween. And these are all things that I visualized in my head. And then when I'm in the fight, um, I'm like, well, now I'm living in the moment. I'm living in this, 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 uh, thing that I've been visualizing for the past eight weeks or whatever. And now I'm here, you know? And so I just kind of let it out even like the scream after I won and I kind of screamed and went a little crazy. Uh, that's all things that I visualized. Uh, so it's cool to like be able to visualize it and then actually do it when it's at the highest level. What's the craziest thing you've said to somebody in the middle of a fight that you visualize ahead of time? Um, I think the one that the big one is I, I was telling her like, no one can save you. Your mom can't save you. The ref can't save you. Like, no one's going to save you. And then, like, the ref ended up pulling me off of her. But that's what I'm, like, known for. And it, like, went viral or whatever. But, yeah, people will hate on it. But they don't, like, they don't get in the cage. They don't fight. They don't know this passion that I have or whatever. And I mean no disrespect yelling at them. It's just the – it's I'm just expressing my, like, myself and my passion and the way I I am, I guess. I don't know. (laughs) So you're living in Momentum City right now. You have that crazy fight, crazy win. How are you feeling physically? I mean, you could see some remnants on your face yeah. in regards to the fight, but on. yeah. Uh, how are you feeling right now? Good. You know, I, I expected it to be like that. I knew that something big was coming and um, I'm not really surprised with it. I expected it, uh, but yeah, I'm excited. I'm happy and you know, winning the bonus, that's life changing, you know? So it's cool. What about, you know, from the mental side, because, you know, you've obviously had to carry a lot with you since the fight was booked. Do you feel in a much better spot now? Because, you know, I've talked to fighters over the years who are, a lot of them are young in their career, that feeling of having a fight to prepare for a fight to look forward to, it can solve a lot of short term problems. But once the fight is over and that adrenaline starts to wear, They just want it right back and it's not there because it just happened. How are you doing from that aspect? Oh yeah, I'm fine. You know, it's, it's, uh, I think the biggest thing that I've learned to do is just living in the moment. You know, I'm not thinking about the past. I'm not thinking about the future. I'm literally just living in the moment and taking things day by day. And I think that's huge to do because you don't want to, you don't want to be like living in the past and living on that hype and that excitement. And then a few, few weeks go by and you're like, oh man, you know, like it's not, I don't feel it anymore, you know? So I think just living in the moment is the best, the best way for me. I know you're living in the moment. 
but uh, have you thought about when you'd like to get back in there and do it again? Like you think you'll maybe get one more before the year's over? Yeah, I want to at least try to get two more. <laughs> I think that go. would that would be ideal for me. Um, I think end of November is what we're looking looking at. Um, and then if if everything goes well and I'm healthy with that fight in November, uh, maybe a quick turnaround in December would be awesome. There's like a cliche in MMA when it comes to getting your first win, the word elusive gets attached to it because it changes everything. It like knocks down a proverbial wall once you get that first one under your belt. It's almost, I've had some fighters tell me like, now I feel like I'm actually a UFC fighter because I went in there and got a win. What does that feel like for you? Is it like a freeing feeling now that you have that win under your belt? Yeah, I didn't even think of that. Um, yeah, I just, I mean, I didn't really feel any pressure going into the fight to be able to win or anything like that. I don't. I don't look at it like, oh, I have to win or I'm not scared to lose either. You know, I think it's just more of like effort and uh, performing to the best of your abilities. But I, yeah, I think that's cool. And to be able to get the win and get a finish in the UFC, I think is huge because that's it's the best in the organization. And for you to go out there and finish someone, I think it's more important to me, you know. 115 is just so fun right now. It's a division yeah. that never lets it never lets you down. It's always an exciting fight. Is there anybody that sticks out to you? Like anyone that you want to tear it up with for the next one? I'm pretty sure I'm going to fight Pollyanna. Oh, really? Yeah. All yeah, right. We were matched up in May. Um, and then, you know, the coronavirus hit and the fights got canceled. So that fight fell, fell through. And then she ended up having rescheduling with Emily. Um, so, I mean, she, yeah, she called me out after the fight and I already anticipated on fighting her. So I, yeah, I'm going to scrap with her. That makes all the sense in the world. Some people like frown upon like booking fighters who won on the same card, but why? It's just so easy that way. I think that's, that's the best matchmaking, right? You know, <laughs> it's just perfect. Yeah. Um, la- last thing before you let you go, because I, I definitely appreciate the time in this crazy year with like so much happening. I mean, it's, it, it's easy for people to just get into a funk and you know, get into that dark place that, you, that you've experienced. And there could be somebody watching right now that may be falling into that themselves. What advice would you give to anybody watching or listening right now that, that may be experiencing some of the things that you've had to deal with over the last several months and, you know, how you were able to at least take steps to get towards the other side of it? I would say just don't give up and take every, every day, day by day, because it does get better. And I would say 100% seek help. If you're in a spot that you feel like you can't get out of, you know, uh, I would definitely seek help, whether it's a family member or somebody that you don't even know, like a therapist, uh, I think would do you, do you really good if you're struggling. Well said. Congratulations on the win, Mallory. Such a such Thank an amazing you. moment to see. Well deserved, amazing win. I appreciate you you sharing your story a little bit and enjoy the victory. Relax a little bit, and uh, all the best to you in preparation for the next one. Thank you so much. Take care.